In this lecture, we are going to look at the case study of moderating social media using AI. And this case is adapted from the book that I list here. In this week, we are going to create our first artificial intelligence or AI-based automation. Specifically, we are going to use the image recognition cloud service provided by Google Vision API. And we are going to use this image recognition to detect whether any images contain any explicit content. This bot can be applied to applications like moderation of social media uploads and many other applications. Our learning objectives include learning the basics of the Google Cloud Vision API and using the UiPath Go Marketplace. We also will review the Excel automation as well as the try-catch activities. I will introduce more details about the Google Cloud Vision API and the UiPath Go Marketplace. Here are the technical requirements. We are going to use the Google Cloud Vision API, so we need to get access or to get the credentials from the Google Cloud service. And I will show you the details of how to do that. Also, we need Microsoft Excel. Here is the project overview. We will first save the images to be analyzed in a specified folder. Then the bot will create a list of the images to be processed in a spreadsheet. Next, the bot will look through all these images and invoke the Google Cloud Vision API to check the images. Here, we are going to use the function called Safe Search in the Google Vision API. So the Safe Search function can give analytics about whether an image contains explicit content such as adult, medical, violent, or racy content. The API will return an output that indicates whether the image contains any of these explicit contents, and our bot will add this output to the Excel spreadsheet. So I will give you some sample images to be processed, and you can download these images from Canvas. And we are going to save these images uh, in the uh, one folder of our project, and I will talk about that uh, in the bot configuration video. Um, so imagine that we have these uh, images or pictures saved in this folder. Then our first part of this automation will be creating a list of these images to be processed. And then uh, our bot will go to obtain the credentials to use the Google Vision API. So that's the second part. In the third part, the bot will invoke this API and this API will return the results uh, as to whether this image contains any of these explicit content, and the bot will save the results in the same spreadsheet. So this is an overview of this automation. Now I will talk about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is the field of making computers achieve human-like intelligence. And an important feature of the modern AI is the ability to learn and adapt to new circumstances. In the first week's lecture, I talked about whether RPA is AI. So the answer is, RPA itself is not AI. If we consider AI as a technology that has the ability to adapt and to learn. And we also talked about the difference between AI and RPA. So here it's more like a review of what we have discussed in the first week's lecture. RPA is a software robot that can mimic human actions, while AI is the simulation of the human intelligence by machines. In terms of application, RPA applies to processes that have high volume, labor-intensive, rule-based and repetitive, and have structured data. In contrast, AI can be applied to tasks that require human intelligence, uh, including natural language processing, uh, using machine learning to make predictions, natural language understanding, and chatbots. And to further contrast RPA with AI, here we can talk about the limitations of RPA. RPA cannot process unstructured or semi-structured data. So one example of the unstructured data can be social media uploads, including images, videos, or texts. Second, RPA cannot make complex decisions that require higher level of cognitive judgments. For example, if we want to make an assessment of the risk level of some loan applicants, 
we need some level of professional judgment to decide whether we can make a loan to this applicant. And this is what RPA cannot automate by itself. Third, RPA cannot perform further analysis of exceptions. Uh, for example, even if we can use the try-catch exception handling, there are still some exceptions that cannot be predicted. Uh, so these exceptions will go to human to be processed. And RPA cannot adapt to changes. Until now, you must grasp the idea that whatever you want the RPA robot to do, you have to configure the activities step by step. And once the environment changes, RPA will not work. And lastly, RPA cannot learn through time. So this is similar to the uh, last point where RPA cannot adapt to changes. So simply speaking, RPA will only follow the orders that you give to the robot. That said, RPA itself cannot cover the automation of all types of tasks. Therefore, we need to combine RPA with more sophisticated automation, uh, especially artificial intelligence. And the combination of RPA and AI is especially important for complex accounting or audit tasks. And now RPA vendors, such as UiPath, have already started to add AI functions to their RPA software. Here, I want to extend the discussion about RPA plus AI. One name people give to this combination is Intelligent Process Automation, or IPA. Some people also call it hyper-automation, but the idea is that RPA combined with AI or other technologies will be an ecosystem of technologies that are coordinated to achieve multifunctional service automation. In this project, the AI capability that we are going to use is called computer vision. So computer vision enables computers to obtain information from images, videos, or other multi-dimensional data. And we are dealing with images here in particular. Computer vision has been used in many applications. Uh, here I give some examples, such as facial recognition, self-driving cars, disease diagnosis, and automated stores. Now, let's talk about Google Vision API. Before we move on, let's first talk about what is API. Connectivity is an amazing thing. By now, we're all used to the instant connectivity that puts the world at our fingertips. From desktops or devices, we can purchase, post, pin, and pick anything, anywhere. We are connected to the world and each other like never before. But how does it happen? How does data get from here to there? How do different devices and applications connect with each other to allow us to place an order, make a reservation, or book a flight with just a few taps or clicks? The unsung hero of our connected world is the Application Programming Interface, or API. It's the engine under the hood and is behind the scenes that we take for granted, but it's what makes possible all the interactivity we've come to expect and rely upon. But exactly what is an API? It's a question everyone asks. Okay, not really, but we're glad you did. The textbook definition goes something like this. In computer programming, an application programming interface, API, is a set of routines, protocols, and tools to build a software API expresses software components in terms of operations, inputs, outputs, and running types. Okay, to speak plainly, an API is the messenger that takes requests and tells a system what you want to do, and then returns the response back to you. To give you a familiar example, think of an API as a waiter in a restaurant. Imagine you're sitting at the table with a menu of choices to order from, and the kitchen is the part of the system which will prepare your order. What's missing is the critical link to communicate your order to the kitchen and deliver your food back to to your table. That's where the waiter, or API, comes in. Ahem. The waiter is the messenger that takes your request or order and tells the system, in this case the kitchen, what to do, and then delivers the response back to you, in this case food. Now that we've whetted your appetite, let's apply this to a real API example. You are probably familiar with the process of searching for airline flights online. Just like at a restaurant, you have a menu of options to choose from, a drop-down menu in this case. You choose a departure city and date, a return city and date, cabin class, and other variables. In order to book your flight, you interact with the airline's website to access the airline's database to see if any seats are available on those dates and what the cost might be based on certain variables. But what if you're not using the airline's website, which has direct access to the information? What if you are using an online travel service that aggregates information from many different airlines? The travel service interacts with the airline's API. 
The API is an interface that, like your helpful waiter, can be asked by that online travel service to get information from the airline system over the internet to book seats, choose meal preferences, or baggage options. It also then takes the airline's response to your request and delivers it right back to the online travel service, which then shows it to you. So now you can see that it's APIs that make it possible for us all to use travel sites. The same goes for all interactions between applications, data, and devices. They all have APIs that allow computers to operate them, and that's what ultimately creates connectivity. So whenever you think of an API, just think of it as your waiter running back and forth between applications, databases, and devices to deliver data and create the connectivity that puts the world at our fingertips. Okay, now I hope you have a basic understanding of what API is. Now I will introduce Google Vision API. You can access Google Vision API by just searching Google Vision API in your browser. And then the first search result should be the official website of Google Vision. So let's go to the Cloud Vision API section. And here I'm just illustrating what, this, what you can do with this API. Here you see that we're in this section where we can just drag image file inside this, sec uh, inside this box and then the Google Vision API will return uh, some of the analysis. So here I will try to uh, put an image here and show you what analysis can the Google Vision API do. Okay, so here we see that uh, this Google Vision API can perform the following analysis. So first one, faces. So it can detect uh, where is the face and what emotion are these faces showing. And so here we see that the joy level, very unlikely, sorrow, very unlikely. Uh, and we can see the confidence level here. Um, so because these people are wearing helmets, the algorithm is not that confident in detecting human faces. And then let's look at the objects and to see what objects can the Google Vision detect. And we see that uh, the Google Vision actually captured very accurately of where these uh, where each person stands right even the uh, lady sitting on the ground now let's look at the labels it's very interesting that google vision can tell that uh, this picture might be taken from a pr protest uh, and also it's related to police right and uh, and it happened on the street and these are the police officers and now let's look at what text can uh, can this Google Vision detect. And interestingly, it really can capture the police, this text in the picture. And let's look at the properties. So here it will uh, give us the dominant color. And the last one, safe search, is the function that we are going to use in our automation project. Uh, so here, the level of adult content, very unlikely. Uh, spoof, possible medical, unlikely violence, unlikely racy, unlikely. So these analyses are quite accurate, I think, and we can try some other images. So let me in upload a new file. And let's look at this puppy. So first, objects, it's a dog, that's correct. And labels, uh, it's a dog, it's a mammal, vertebrate, golden retriever. So these are very accurate. And look at property. Uh, the dominant color, we can see that it's the color of the puppy and also the flowers. And for the safe search, um, all these are uh, very unlikely. You can play with the API on the Google's website. And uh, in the automation, we are going to uh, invoke the API from UiPath and directly get the results from the safe search function. So we are going to get the results for uh, adult, medical, violence, and racy, and save these results in a spreadsheet for each image. Now let's talk about UiPath Marketplace. You can access UiPath Marketplace by just searching Marketplace UiPath in your browser, and you should come to this website uh, of connectuipath.com marketplace. So the marketplace is basically an open source uh, community where people can publish their libraries. 
uh, you can think of a library as the workflow that you configure, right? So they publish their work on this marketplace and their work will be reviewed by the UiPath team and then anyone else can download their libraries so that they can use directly instead of configuring these activities by themselves. Now let's see some examples in the marketplace. In here, we can see some very interesting packages. Uh, for example, when you are dealing with PDF automation, you can download these packages that can uh, extend the uh, functionalities of PDF automation provided by the original UiPath package. Um, let's say Excel to PDF conversion. So if you use this package, you can convert Excel file into PDF. So the marketplace is where uh, the innovative projects are produced uh, that can be directly used by all the other individuals. So in our automation this week, we are going to use the Google Vision API activities published in this marketplace. So we can search Google Vision. So the one that we are going to use is this one. Uh, but we are not going to download from here. We are going to download these packages from the UiPath Studio. And I will show you later when we configure the bot. Now, I hope you have a basic understanding of what this project is about and some basic knowledge about AI. Now you should follow the next video to create your Google Vision API credentials and add that credentials to your Windows credential manager so that we can use in our automation project.